were uh, systematically smaller than tensile masses. And uh, we understand that this tensile mass black hole originate all of them, all of them, all of them by accretion on the neutron star in GRBs. In the meantime, every time I presented this lecture myself in Mexico, for example, I don't know if you were there, somebody listened to the entire, to the entire lecture and that the brain ask a question, yes, we agree with you, but explain single sexual. What is the problem with single sexual? The problem with single sexual is that data have input since my classic work about the three-point-tutorial mass of the limit and the fact that sinus H1 was more than three masses possibly up to 10. And, uh, and things have improved tremendously. And people have not realized not realize until now that indeed sinus X1 is not only with a mass larger than tensile masses. Lately result I think gives 20 solar masses. Are you following? 20 solar masses, much, much bigger. And moreover, the, the signus X1 as a companion of that fluid, 25 solar masses. This opens a completely new scenario in the direction of the work of Felix. Felix has been the only one emphasizing over and over that Cygnus X1 was part of the family of binaries of a different kind. And I think I am gaining the understanding of that. I'm gaining the understanding of that because we can gain this understanding exactly on the ground of what we understood of GRBs. Namely, there is a possibility, it's fascinating, it's known now, it's clear from GRBs, it's clear from GRBs that if you have a collapse of a star of more than 18 solar masses, okay, very likely form the regular black hole. But it must be larger than 18 solar masses. Therefore, all the GRB we have been studying where a special class of massive binaries, okay, a very special class of massive binaries, which did not collapse initially to black hole. But this is a, a different branch. They, have, they don't collapse to black hole, therefore they have to, the chance to evolve in a sequence uh, of two objects 
Let's must see. This is the beauty. Mm -hmm. But it's a different class. Right. Eh? If we can succeed in forcoming lights to clarify this point clearly will be of tremendous progress. I hope you understood what they said. Did you understand or no? Should I repeat? Eh? No, you, you understood that. Yes. There are two sorts of massive binaries. And the key difference is that they are there is a maximum mass uh, of a massive star which collapses directly to the core. And that collapse is of 18 solar masses. The lower limit can be larger. And the fact that Cygnus X1 is indeed a mass larger than 18 solar masses, and as a companion, okay, this means that it's part of this older family. And what uh, Felix has been doing is to give many cases of such different family. Okay? This uh, I really would like very much to make uh, a sketch even while you are here and attempt to write this uh, scenario and attempt to write together this scenario. Maybe we can at least draft. Draft. <coughs> but there is another case now. Eh? There is another case like uh, Cygnus X1 in the Magallanic clouds. Yes. It's uh, also a binary for you have uh, a black hole, a very a black hole with a mass larger than 18 solar masses that is accreting from a from a relatively massive star. Okay, okay. I really would like to yeah. find the time to write yeah. okay. this uh, this difference with you. Yes, and we don't have to do it, of now, this means, I would like to tell you why well, this is uh, not a joke. This is not a joke. This is not a joke because Cygnus X1 is inside our galaxy. Therefore, there is not enough statistic yet about massive star. Clearly, there are enough statistics to say that if they are more than 18, they form black hole. This, I think, is okay, so. But nobody has been able to tell you. The time of uh, a 25 solar mass star is not known. There is no statistic. How long it takes for a 25 solar mass star or 30 solar mass star? What is the health situation for such an object? 
it could be very well. I think there are a few examples of some very massive star which collapse. But my point is a big question mark. How much we have to wait for the companion of signal sexual to collapse, either to another black hole or to a to a supernova. But this part has not been studied yet. We have no statistics. Therefore, the reason I'm saying it's not a joke, because even in one week time, in any other time, that massive star could collapse. Mm. It's not a one galaxy. Now, we are in a very tragic situation very tragic situation because there are all these people of Nigel Mirgo doing numerics and purporting that they are seen. My point of the tragedy of that field is not that they don't to do the correct computation. They, the computation they do, they are okay. They simulate. Okay? What is not okay, they have not proved that they have a detector working on gravitational waves. Because in no case there has been an independent evidence from the astrophysical data and the gravitational data of coincidence. Mm -hmm. This is the tragedy. Because otherwise we could uh, have a fantastic future in which they are the detectors, the locals can program to look at this object, and we have a detector, but we don't have a detector. This is the, the, the very critical point. This is the critical point. That they are doing a lot of analysis. Yes, they are doing that. But they have not proved that they are detected. I mean, they are saying that the like of Virgo Carga uh, are observing. Okay? It's only fair to say that Carga cannot observe because they don't exist like in the phenomena. There are some people of uh, like of Virgo working with them trying to build a detector in, uh, in Japan, but the detector is not working. The Virgo people, it's a fact that there is not a single signal of gravitational waves, single, ever detected by Virgo. You understand? Even the case that they say they detected 27 or 17, whatever it is, the number, okay? It's not true because they did not observe. They participate in proving that they did not observe in order to make uh, the, the agreement with the American people. But uh, paradoxically, they did not have the signal. They participate only in proving that they are no signal. You understand the paradox? Not necessarily. You don't? Mm -hmm. You won't? I think I have to clarify okay. what you did not follow. So, when they participate um, in the okay. in the detection of gravitational wave from the binary neutral star, okay? okay? Uh, oh, you mean the time scale? Maybe the timeline. Oh, okay, clear, please, please continue. When we participate, okay, the detection was done by the interferometer in the US. The only way 
Vietro partecipi di setta degli innocenti, dopo degli innocenti, and the fact that the degli innocenti was used by the Americans in order to prove that they saw gravitational wave. But Virgo, you do not see anything together. Uh, Is that the yeah? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clear. Is that clear or not? It's clear. If Virgo did this anything, so Virgo cannot prove or disprove. Yes. Uh, they, they did not see it. And then the result that they did not see anything was used in order to prove the existence of the American result, which we would never see anything, never. Either before or after. Therefore, they are still using only the data of the UFS interferometer, which, in my opinion, are not reliable for many reasons. You, you, you understand that? Eh? Therefore, when you read the legal vehicle uh, line, Virgo never observed, Chandra never observed. It's only Nigel, which the two interferometers that they are observed. But unfortunately, they are not reliable. Of course, they are doing a lot of uh, simulation and pretend that uh, the simulation are uh, in agreement with the two, uh, uh, the two uh, detectors in the US. But uh, the, the statistic is very, very poor. They just fit model in noisy data. Carlo, mi auguro che tu stai seguendo. But uh, let's go back to the lecture of today. Having established what my deep desire is to write something with Felix along this line, at least the, what we are learning from GRP, what we are learning from Sigmund Sexual, what we are learning from your data of uh, supraluminal, etc. object. This is very timely to insert. Mm -hmm. But today, I presume, I gave, I indicated the title because there is a general new situation in relativistic astrophysics which is very, 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 very dramatic. And I think the first time that we both realized how dramatic it was, was uh, in discussion in Armenia uh, during our meeting. There is something totally new. In cosmology today. And what is what this, which I think is the most incredible novel book? This is the talk. The novel point, I hope it should be clear to you, is that we started with uh, a, a Dark Ages, a Big Bang, the Fermi work on cosmological nuclear synthesis. Yes, that is fantastic work. But 
there is a point, an arrow there, which tells the first galaxies. And to me, the most unexpected thing of cosmology, the most unexpected, is that we are gaining evidence, and I think Felix will move ahead. We are, we are gaining evidence that the first process of star formation starts at C larger than 10. And the reason is because we see two GRB, one at eight and one at nine, on two. Now we understand surely why it is so exciting for us to study the one at Z equal eight and Z equal nine. We find two GRBs. You understand? At Z equal eight and nine, we find two GRPs up there. And what is clear evidence recently is that before, and of course, if there are GRPs, there are binary stars, and therefore, uh, they must be galaxy. Though for their first galaxy, first. But there is evidence that not only they are the first galaxies there, from which this uh, Z equal 8 and Z equal 9.5 GRB were born from. But there is something much more dramatic that's very likely before the trigger of the first star, they were very massive in the course. And this is completely, I hope that uh, Gregor is following, because this is extremely important for everyone. And also for you, and also for Shishen. There must be reasons why such huge black hole form. And this cannot be the same black hole which formed the Gamma Ray Burst. You understand? No, they are the one coming in the Felix family of very massive binary like sinus x1. No, no, it's different. And this is the reason why we are so interested in the work of uh, our group in Argentina. It's very likely that there is uh, dark matter, other possibility. But this is the big frontier. In other words, we see black holes all over. It's very likely we see black holes, I think, in a topic I gave one year to study, that we see black holes even in the supernova, in the companion of the remnant of the, of the supernova plenty of black holes. We find black holes all over. But it's incredible that we find black holes even in the most of life which is not connected with star revolution. This is the key point. It's revolutionary. And I'm sure that uh, apart from my introduction, because many of these ideas came sitting nearby in uh, a 
academia, yes. to realize how dramatic is the situation. Okay. Are you following me? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's certainly nothing to do with GRB. The only point is that GRB was started there. Okay? But the, the thing new is a new component. A brand new component of very massive black hole of 10 to the 8 or 10 to the 9 solar masses just there at the beginning. Okay. And, I, and I, this is the, the, the fantastic idea which came in discussion with Felix. It's new science, completely okay. new science. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. <laughs> uh, I think uh, we should... You, I hope you, it huh? was interesting for me yes. to clarify my mind, yes. but also for you. Yes. And I hope very much we will work together on that other work. Okay. But let's, I'm sure you have many more things to say. Yes. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. And, uh, well, uh, first I would like to present briefly myself. Uh, I was born in, in Montevideo, in Uruguay, and uh, where I finished uh, high school. And then, uh, because I had to work, uh, I moved to Buenos Aires, where I started working when I was uh, 17 or 18 years old and uh, uh, I started to study in, uh, engineering in, uh, in, uh, in a faculty called the, in the university called the Technological University that was for people only that only for people that work during the day. So the courses started at 19 hours in the evening and finished almost at midnight. And we had to get up the following day to go working. And, uh, and that was a uh, university founded by a president that had Argentina called Perón. Uh, that uh, he initiated this university because he said we need we need people uh, that is working to get uh, uh, a, 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 a technological formation and scientific formation. But uh, later on, uh, since I had uh, had uh, courses in that university of physics. I decided to to move into physics, and uh, and then I moved to the University of La Plata, uh, and instead of physics, because they gave me a uh, fellowship to study in the university and uh, astronomy, astrophysics. So I finished my PhD. And uh, I did also studies in uh, philosophy simultaneously when I could do it. So, uh, and I finished also philosophy. I became with a degree to be able to teach in the university philosophy also. And I was interested in, in, uh, in uh, philosophy of science and epistemology mostly at that time. But there was a coup d'etat, uh, one of many coup d'etats uh, in Argentina, that uh, the University uh, of Buenos Aires, where I finished my master and professorship uh, in philosophy, was closed because they, they this, the military government didn't want to have people that think. So they closed the university in Buenos Aires. They sack a lot of professors and, uh, 
And the only thing I could do is to continue astronomy in La Plata, in the University of La Plata. And astronomy was at that time uh, not dangerous for the establishment of uh, the military. And uh, so, because they said, well, these people is worrying about stars and they, they walk always looking at the sky and they will fall into one. And then uh, when I finished uh, my degree, I, I started, uh, I got a position uh, during a democratic government in, the, in, in research, in the National Research Council. But then came another coup d'etat. And uh, in the year 76, where as a consequence of that uh, coup d'etat, 30,000 people disappeared, mostly uh, journalists and uh, and uh, philosophers and people like that, 30,000. And uh, I left the country uh, and I went to England. Uh, I did my first postdoc in, in England and then I moved to the US where I worked in the University of uh, Maryland. And then uh, I moved to Caltech also, and I worked uh, at Arecibo Observatory during several years. And from there, I uh, moved to Argentina, and then I, want, I went back to Europe to work in, uh, in, uh, in France. The Atomic Energy Commission wanted my expertise because I had work on galaxies and in particular in infrared luminous galaxies. And, uh, and so uh, France was involved in, uh, in, in, a, uh, in a mission, uh, a space mission of ESA called ISO, Infrared Space Observatory. And since I had been working in Caltech on the infrared astronomical satellite that the US launched before they wanted my expertise to do the scientific exploitation of US. And there I learned when I arrived that uh, France was involved in the launch of, uh, at that time, French Soviet Union uh, mission for high energy astrophysics. And uh, I learned that uh, they were discovering high energy sources uh, for first time. And since I had a radio astronomy uh, capability, I became interested in black holes, and in particular, stellar mass black holes. So, and uh, so I did a lot of work uh, in high energy astrophysics. And then uh, my present uh, position is as an emeritus uh, uh, researcher. I have a, of an institute in the campus of the University of Buenos Aires for astronomical and physics uh, space research. And also I uh, got a position, as I said, where I'm also emeritus at the uh, French Atomic Energy Commission uh, to do work on high energy astrophysics. So in this talk, I will briefly mention uh, the cosmological models and then present the observations that uh, motivated this question. Did black hole jets enhance the formation of POP3 stars? POP3 stars are the first stars formed in the universe. And, uh, and here you can see uh, a sketch of uh, the global evolution of the universe, where after the Big Bang, when matter and radiation decoupled, was uh, 
were formed the first uh, atoms and molecules uh, and started what is called, or partly called, the Dark Ages. Uh, until uh, 200 million years after the Big Bang, uh, was initiated what is called, called the Epoch of Reionization, essentially by the radiation, the UV radiation, but by the first massive stars and first uh, that were in the first galaxies to be formed. Uh, 200 million after the Big Bang, and it was initiated this uh, this epoch of uh, of reionization of the intergalactic medium until the universe uh, got an age of one billion solar masses, when the intergalactic medium became om almost uh, completely and fully ionized. And this is why, from the present epoch of the universe, we can prove uh, the evolution of the universe during all this epoch, until the epoch of reionization. Now, the situation, as uh, Remo mentioned, is that uh, now uh, have been detected about 300 supermassive black holes with very large masses, with masses as large as uh, the most massive black holes uh, detected presently in the universe. For instance, the black hole in uh, Messier 87, a uh, galaxy very near us, uh, was imaged uh, the, the dark uh, region produced by the black hole uh, has this mass. And when the universe was just one billion years old, uh, it is sensed that these very massive stars already existed. And, uh, and <clears throat> this population of very massive stars, it is believed that they are the tip of a uh, black hole iceberg that uh, are hosted by galaxies that now with the James Webb telescope are being detected at, and most of these galaxies uh, we are found that are uh, ultra compact galaxies with very with masses of about 10 to the 8 masses at redshift that go up to uh, about uh, 13. Uh, and uh, the puzzle uh, that is now... Uh, and this is the greatest discovery on James Webb. Yes. In these weeks. Yes. And the, the puzzle is how uh, black holes are formed and grow so fast to become so massive. Yeah, and uh, if you want to read a nice uh, review, uh, trying to explain this, uh, this is a review essentially by theoreticians, uh, is an annual review, and uh, with Rodriguez, my collaborator, uh, uh, we published two years later, last year, uh, in uh, New Astronomy Reviews, uh, this uh, question, uh, 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 how, what are the alternatives, uh, besides also uh, uh, sections on Cygnus 6 one and, and so forth. Now, maybe you, you, you find that reference in print. Uh, yes. This is an extended uh, review, very extended. It took us all the pandemia. Uh, yes. Yes. This uh, there you have new astronomy reviews uh, uh, of of 22. So. Uh, <coughs> 
It took us all the pandemia. He was in Mexico, I was in Buenos Aires, so we would talk every week. And my role was to formulate the questions and, uh, and get the help of uh, Luis Felipe Rodriguez, who was in, uh, in Mexico, to make part of the calculations. Because he was formed in Harvard, and he was offered he got a PhD in Harvard. He was offered a position at Harvard, and uh, but he didn't want it. He wanted to go back to Mexico to contribute with the development of Mexico. And, uh, and I asked him why you didn't accept a position in Harvard. And his answer was, although I have been many years in the US, I still do not understand the Americas. <laughs> and then that was his answer. So, uh, and here you can see uh, uh, what is the astrophysicist uh, vision of, of, of how this uh, super. The places where Yes. And you can see. Uh, uh, in this diagram, it shows the mass of the black holes, how they evolved from a redshift of 30 up to uh, uh, a redshift of 7, uh, assuming uh, that they grow at an Eddington limit with a radiative efficiency of 10%. And uh, what they find is that to get these uh, masses of 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10 solar masses, the, uh, the seven uh, black holes at redshifts greater than 7 are plotted here. And uh, as you can see, uh, the initial masses at redshifts of 30 should be uh, larger than one th than 10 to the three solar masses. Uh, if assuming, they grow, assuming uh, if you take initially 10 to the three, uh, then uh, no, then it's uh, five, assuming assume they grow yes, at Eddington then limit. Then you you, that you, you get that 10 to the three to several units of 10 to the 4 that depends on each uh, on each black hole so with different colors and here i have plotted the very reason results with uh, the james webb with the james webb one of the expectations that we have is that we can trace uh, how these black holes have uh, grown uh, from uh, redshifts uh, of about uh, 15 to the uh, to these uh, redshifts of uh, about uh, seven okay and uh, and here you see these stars these are very recent results from a few months ago you can see the three black holes that us we were expecting from these models with masses of uh, from uh, six solar mass to a few times 10 to the seven solar masses that are in the way to become black holes with masses of 10 to the nine 10 to the 10 solar masses when the universe was only 700 million years old. Now, uh, and here you see these uh, colors indicate different models to form the seeds of these uh, supermassive black holes that are uh, already uh, detected. Now, what I uh, realize is that people in general and cosmologists, because I have been in the last months in, in cosmologist meeting, they don't think or don't, uh, I mean, when I tell them, they say, of course, and they start thinking, 
So I presented this. And the point is that these black holes here that had masses of 1,000, uh, 30,000, 40,000 solar masses at redshift of 30 were surrounded by enormous and very enormous densities of gas because the global cosmic gas density evolves with redshift as the third power of the redshift. So at a redshift of 30 or 25, the mean global gas density will be 10,000 times or more the mean global gas density in the present universe. So the conditions under which are these black holes when they start to grow is that they are immersed in a very large uh, densities of, of gas and neutral gas, essentially, molecular gas. And so uh, this is very natural that these seeds had to grow very fast uh, because they had a lot of uh, gas to be fed on. And, uh, and uh, the question that I, I have asked uh, what are the astrophysical models on the formation of these supermassive black holes? And, uh, and here you have the three types of models for the formation of the of the this supermassive black hole series. First, uh, there are people uh, since uh, Seldovich and Novikov's. Uh, uh, paper in 1967 that think that these seeds of supermassive black holes are primordial. They they started to grow in, in, in instabilities of the of the uh, plasma uh, at the extremely high redshifts. Uh, and, uh, and there are uh, two, essentially, two, uh, uh, two uh, uh, more astrophysical models that uh, uh, one in the context of warm, warm uh, dark matter uh, cosmology that is work uh, done here in ICRAN, ICRANET, and uh, this is work uh, 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 led by Carlos Arguelles, uh, who uh, has published this year uh, with Remo and other people uh, a new model in the context of warm dark matter cosmology uh, that uh, is the model based on the collapse of fermionic dark matter cores. Okay, that all of you uh, should know because it's a model that has been worked uh, here in this institute. And, uh, and the other model that is uh, more known by the community is in the context of cold dark matter cosmologies where uh, turbulent cold flows give birth to, uh, gave birth to those supermassive uh, black hole seeds, and this is a model, well, based on numerical sim simulations uh, published in Nature last year that had uh, uh, a lot of impact because, well, it, it, it was uh, uh, published by people that has been working on this subject since many years, uh, according to who uh, 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 these uh, uh, supermassive black hole seeds were created by direct collapse at redshifts of about 25, uh, and these seeds had uh, masses of about 10 to the 4 solar masses. And uh, but the interesting point of these models is that uh, 
that uh, star formation is prevented by the high turbulence of cold flows. If you have uh, 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 baryonic matter being accreted, uh, uh, you don't form uh, easily uh, stars because the stars are formed from gas, but if the gas is very turbulent, uh, this turbulence uh, prevents the formation of stars by uh, gravitational collapse. Hmm? But if, I'm sorry. Yes? But if this, uh, this, uh, this gas is very massive, then there's no chance to produce this seed to collapse. Yes, but... Okay, because it's a, it's a competition between a, a wave or some wave of turbulence which is spared down. Yeah. On the other side is gravitation attractive nature, at which certainly more mass is it, more attractive. Yeah. So it's competition of these two kinds. Yes. So then by the time in the time. So either this thing is very massive, or you gain win by a gravitation collapse, or of course, if these things, uh, particles very massive, the turbulence or the sound's velocity, the turbulence must be weaker. Mm -hmm. So, he, 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 he should go either way. And you see that just which signs is wind. If this uh, massive collapse, gravitation attract nature is wind, then it will create a seed to have all this uh, very massive seed. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, because the, all this is uh, driven by two factors. One is called uh, dark matter. Okay, uh, there is uh, this. Everything is formed from uh, dark matter in this moment, and uh, and then they made uh, numerical simulations. Uh, these people and uh, sorry. The, yeah. the other point is, the two points is, and the other point is expansion. If expansion rate is faster, to separate two things faster, then it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a point to uh, prevent it from being, being, being condensed. Uh, yes. So three points, three factor compete. Together. Yes. But one point, important point, besides what you mentioned, is that uh, is the cold flows on which I, I will mention, uh, because this is essential to get barriers in, in the central part of this uh, cold dark matter halos, uh, you, you need uh, to have this very uh, rapid cold flows. Uh, and this is uh, a, a very important uh, point that uh, where I'm going to go, because this very, uh, this very cold flows, they have to get into the center of the, of the uh, dark matter field. So, but the point is that in these two models, these channels for the formation of uh, supermassive black hole seas in the high set universe are not associated and could precede the formation of population three stars. Uh, they could precede. And if you read this paper, uh, they leave, perhaps you can form some stars, but, uh, but essentially what you will form are these uh, black hole seeds that collapse directly. So, if that is true, uh, then one for this, uh, for, the, for the formation of the first uh, population three stars to change the paradigm uh, 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 of uh, formation of uh, black holes uh, and, and the seeds uh, because we are used to have 
black holes like Cygnus X1, like all the black holes that uh, are supposed to be detected by LIGO, that they are the consequence of the collapse of stars. But in this case, you form the first black holes, seeds, directly before the formation of large populations of pop uh, three stars. So, uh, why uh, I want to mention that uh, these cold streams, because this starts to become uh, the, the one of the central points, besides uh, the, the dark matter helots. Uh, cold streams in the early massive hot uh, halos as the main mode of massive uh, galaxy formation. It's how you form the first massive galaxies. And this is a paper in Nature by Deckel and collaborators, where you here are shown what will be the streams. Uh, and, uh, and these streams will be uh, at the origin of the cosmic filaments that are observed nowadays, uh, where the galaxies are observed, distributed in, in, in filaments. So you mean this core stream come from the larger structure, a larger scale structure? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, this how it can how it can be means it's so this cold stream. I would easy to understand if it's not cold. It's a hot stream means if you want to form a structure large scale, it should have more kinematic energy to be extended. But now you are what you're talking cold stream. Cold stream means it must be very massive type. So this very massive type, how you move. To have a large, a large scale, a large distance structure like this, I would imagine it turned out to be sphere, more localized. Well, this is another question. But these streams, uh, in these models, uh, they don't ask how you you form originally. They said we observe today the distribution of galaxies according to very large filaments, okay? Uh, this is, uh, you are pointing a, a good point, but the origin is cosmological, okay? It's before uh, the formation of the first black holes, uh, the first uh, stars. So my question, and you can see here in this paper, uh, it was proposed that, uh, that you form the first massive galaxies from the conversions, conversion of uh, these cold streams that imprint angular momentum when they, uh, they came together uh, at the point of conversion that imprints angular momentum to the variables. Uh, and uh, so the question I ask when I read these theoretical papers, that is the normal question to, to ask, is are there observations of converging turbulent cold flows in massive dark matter here? Okay. Uh, what are the observations we have for, for this uh, that might indicate that this was the mechanism for formation of the far massive galaxies that hosted the uh, black hole seeds at very high ratios? And, uh, and here you can see, and there are, I was looking, there are very recent observations shown here. Uh, these are uh, intergalactic cold gas streams feeding a supermassive black hole 
in the radio galaxy, this is a very powerful radio galaxy, at a protocluster of massive galaxies at cosmic noon. No. So when the uh, universe had uh, an age of only 1.7 giga years, and here you see a computer model based uh, uh, in the year uh, 2013, uh, and these are observations done very recently, uh, or reported very recently in the journal Science, uh, where you can see uh, these are the cold streams. This is a model, uh, numerical model, uh, where you, you can see these streams, and uh, it's uh, striking that the observations show here a stream. This is a cold gas stream traced by carbon, the, uh, the, is traced by the, uh, the fundamental state of uh, carbon, the hyperfine transition, uh, and uh, that is coming, a stream coming from the north uh, east, and here you can see another stream in blue, uh, coming from the southwest, and this is uh, a powerful radio galaxy, very well known and very very well studied. Uh, that is surrounded. This is a powerful radio galaxy that is surrounded by a, a, a warm Lyman alpha emission. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you see the scale of uh, what would be the Milky Way galaxy there, very small. Uh, and, uh, and this is a, a schematic representation of the observations that uh, are here shown and published in, in, in science. So uh, this is a publication uh, of uh, two months ago, uh, just came when I was asking, what are the observations of these cold streams? And here they are. You can see these are observations uh, made essentially with ALMA, the array of ALMA in the, in the Atacama Desert. And, uh, and they did observations of the uh, hyperfine transition of neutral carbon, which has an upper uh, energy level of 23 degrees K, uh, and a critical density of 500 cubic centimeters per cubic uh, centimeter. So the, this transition traces molecular gas. The molecular gas requires these densities and this uh, type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, temperature. So, and you can see here the, the transitions, the northwest uh, stream, and here the uh, southeast stream, uh, merging, merging together in the central part of uh, this proto-cluster of massive galaxies. And, uh, and he, this is uh, uh, the essential uh, uh, diagram shown, where, where is a plot typical of radio astronomers, where you can see the, uh, here in the y-axis the velocity in kilometers per second and here the offset along this direction. And you can see that uh, the northwest stream and the southeast stream are uh, converging at relative velocities of 15 kilometers, 1500 kilometers per second. So the two streams are coming at very large 
speeds from uh, very different from different directions and uh, and so uh, and obviously there will be a high turbulent molecular gas very high turbulent molecular gas that will prevent the formation of stars by gravitational collapse uh, uh, and uh, and then uh, this uh, this is a projection you know this is uh, at a redshift of 3.8 of what might have happened uh, early in in the universe so uh, the seeds of supermassive black holes may be formed before the bulk of population three stars nuclei. So, uh, so this is the second component to form these seeds, right? these cold streams. And there are observations. If that is correct, well, I start. If these observations are correct, I start to believe in these models of formation of these black hole seeds before the large populations of pop three stars. So this implies uh, many things. So I have been reading uh, all this. I'm emeritus now, so I can have the pleasure of read what other people do. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the James Webb uh, Telescope uh, have provided us with uh, several surprises which uh, pose us with new problems. And the first surprise is that uh, luminous galaxies at redshift greater than seven are ultra compact of only a few tens of hundreds of parsecs. They are very luminous, but they're extremely compact. Uh, then uh, very distant galaxies in the range of uh, redshifts in between six and 13 are more numerous, bright, and massive than expected. And fainter galaxies are detected only when uh, gravitational lenses, they are uh, amplified by luminosity by uh, gravitational lenses, intervening gravitational lenses. So very likely this uh, very distant galaxies are uh, the tips of an iceberg of galaxies. And the same with the uh, supermassive black holes that are detected at high redshifts are the tip of an iceberg of black holes. So the third uh, unexpected surprise is that supermassive black holes form of well, one earlier than expected and are more numerous and more massive than expected. Spiral galaxies were already in place at uh, a few million years after the Big Bang. This is also a, a, a new thing that uh, with James Webb, when you see the image of, uh, of uh, the Hubble telescope of a galaxy that looks like being amorphous and compare it with the new image of uh, the James Webb, you can see in the image of uh, the James Webb spiral structures that were not seen even with Hubble. So, uh, and then uh, uh, the other surprise is that uh, galaxies started to die, become passive, namely star form with uh, having star formation quench earlier than expected. I think, and then metals and dust were formed very early, few million years after the Big Bang already are found galaxies that are enshrouded in gas uh, uh, by, by dust, by, by high density molecular and uh, gas and dust. 
Well, uh, there is uh, something that uh, I I took uh, I take uh, uh, as interested is uh, this uh, sentence by uh, Wittgenstein uh, that uh, was quoted by uh, Postnov in the Yerevan meeting. And the, the, the sentence is, the, pro, the problems are solved, all these problems that we find now from uh, the James Webb, James Webb was demanded now to explain this, are, uh, are solved not by coming up with new discoveries, but by assembling what we have long been Familiar with. Assembly, but. Uh, assembly. And seeing, I'm sure, new objects. Mm -hmm. Because without assembly, it would not have been enough without seeing the bigger black holes of 10 to the 8 and 10 to the 9 solar masses. Yes, certainly. But all this, what I'm going to say is that uh, now is. All these surprises and problems that are presented by the James Webb will be solved by assembling what we have long been familiar with. And this is what I, I'm going to go, what I'm proposing now. Because what I talked so far are uh, uh, synthesis of uh, theories and observations, etc. But now we are puzzled by this. And, uh, and in fact, astrophysicists, as says uh, Wittgenstein, have long been familiar with the impact on star formation of relativistic jets and associated outflows from accreting black holes. So, these seeds of supermassive black holes must have grown very rapidly. But when they grow very rapidly, also they have a feedback that is in the form of jets and, uh, and outflows. And my hypothesis is that several of these surprises will be explained by uh, what radio astronomers know since a long time. And the question is, can relativistic jets and outflows from rapidly growing black hole seeds enhance the formation of population free stars? This is the question that I, I ask. Why, why you call them population free stars of new stars? Uh, well, uh, well, I'm I'm addressing a, a, a cosmological problem here that James Webb is putting us uh, cosmological problems. So I want to explain them uh, uh, on the basis of the existence of uh, uh, very strong feedback from the rapidly growing yes. seeds of supermassive black hole. Yes. And now I'm going to I'm, I'm going to to show how this uh, uh, feedback of rapidly growing black holes uh, must uh, impact on the formation on new stars. That we can go and use that physics to explain what happened at cosmological distances that are revealed by uh, the James Webb telescope. I understand. That interpolates us. That. So, I. Sorry? Yeah. Yes. Thing. The first slide was stating that the ultra compact uh, galaxy size of 10 parsec, I mean, uh, our 10 to 800 kiloparsec, right? So this is 10 to 
minus four of, of the of the new two eight sets. I mean it looks really yeah. Okay. This means that angular distance would be also irresolvable by, by the this side. Yeah. Uh, there is well, they, with this number, I think. They they don't see they see all the light yeah, from these sources come sorry, from uh, sizes, yeah. diameters uh, of uh, of the of the blob yeah. that are in between tens and hundreds of parcels. This is uh, easy because if they don't have a point, if they have something extended. Yeah, but for that this extended one, we can make an ultimate, but ten parcels that could be resolved at ten, I think this is impossible. No, but, but this, uh, this has a uh, few tens. And we are talking about uh, redshifts uh, of six in these cases. Yes. Okay. Yes. Angular distance of ten parsecs. Yes. Okay, no, but you 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 can. Okay. This so is. Just ask one yeah. And uh, the last line, I also not really. Which one? Our last line, the six uh, number six. You are talking about few mega. Uh, mega years. years. So. The uh, CMB is 300,000 years after the... Mi mi million years. Yes, exactly. So it means that you are just after the CMB. Uh, after the CMB, the temperature is huge. You cannot form uh, anything there. It's, it's still uh, uh, hundreds of, of degrees, the, the temperature of the gas. Well, yeah, our, observe, our observe, uh, galaxies, when the uh, cosmic age of those galaxies, were 300 million years. And, ah, ah you, you are right. It's, uh, it's, yeah, I'm sorry. A few hundred. Yeah, I should correct this. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Well, I did this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, when. Uh, when I was resting from uh, my driving from France, <laughs> because I, I wanted to show this uh, thing uh, also. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, a few hundred million, million years. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm going to go now fast. Sorry, I, I, I yeah. Interrupt one so here's interesting thing is the part of this uh, theory that you understand. The interesting information here is that something, this nonlinear effect, you know, nonlinear effect for this structure formation, usually described by the curvature perturbation, is not enough because all this nonlinear effect come earlier than we expect by based on this curvature perturbation. Okay, the base lesson. Something more by this type. To initiate early all this uh, nonlinear perturbative curvature, you know, to start to start all these these things, this is what I, I, I see. Because you say as we expect, it means in fact we normally this uh, the early curvature perturbation out of horizon and we enter horizon and start all this business in nonlinear region. So now you see that by the fact the things of this structure by nonlinear effect was born earlier than that expect means that expect no. on curvature. No. No? No. Uh, no, I I I say some of these things can be explained by the impact of the uh, of the rapidly growing black holes that are uh, being observed. I mean, and the impact is due to relativistic jets. Any black hole that accretes like crazy to explain this uh, is producing a very strong impact in the form of relativistic jets. 
and outflows, associated outflows in the environment. And I will say that the surprising things uh, in, in, in here, some of the surprising things are explained by the fact that uh, these uh, black holes were formed very early, accreting at very high rates and producing extremely important feedback in the environment that was extremely high density. That is the thing that I, I said at the beginning, that uh, at a redshift of 25, for instance, the, these uh, black hole seeds that were growing, were growing so fast because they were immersed in extremely large densities of gas, okay? I, I'm not going into the problem. No, I, I, the, I understood what you say, but I try to trace even earlier. All this no, inhomogeneity no. was formed earlier, and then you have time to, 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 to go to what you said. But, the, but the, if I may intervene, the novelty, this is the reason why uh, <clears throat> I don't like the population trick, if you don't mind. Here we are in a new scenario, and this scenario, for the first time, okay, we leave the old problem of uh, Fermi on uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, element formation, a light element. That is a very easy. Now what we are seeing is uh, Z around 25, uh, there could be seed of 10 to the 6 solar masses going very fast to black hole of 10 to the 8 solar masses. And the new idea introduced, if I understand correctly, um, here is that this large black hole uh, emits jet are active, are active, very active. Extremely active. Ex extremely active. And dense. And they produce, they produce uh, the early stars. But the population tree were introduced in a different concept in the a traditional cosmology, then the uh, uh, first instability, then the thing that you were discussing. That is the old process. And they were introduced without black holes as population three stars, very massive, etc. This philosophy is cut now. Is that we have something new happening. Maybe this is the, the only place where can come in ourselves because we know that they are objects around 10 to the 6 solar mass from all dark heroes, for example. In, in but sorry? it's not important. This is a different, a different, a different input. And the only thing you are saying, consider that as a Gedanken possibility. But the new idea is everything start now from 25, not much earlier, uh, in seeds which create very large black holes. And these large black holes, by emitting energy, rotation, jet, and so forth, create stars. Therefore, they are stars, not of population, the old population, and they are new stars, a new galaxy. New galaxy which uh, create also GRBs. Yeah. This is, this is yeah. The, uh, the okay. Way. Yeah. It's a change of paradigm. A complete change of paradigm. Yes. It's uh, not time to study. Uh, let, let me try to, and this important sure. be here. It's not uh, important. Uh, this is the where they manage with GRBs. 
a big mystery is why we have 18 Z and so forth, we have GMDs. What means GMD? It means uh, a big chain. What means big chain? It means massive stars, uh, which have evolved and form uh, neutron stars, etc., etc. The key point, the new point is don't try to go too far back because there is a big new object happening at Z. Later than 25, and before then, there are big black holes there. This, and, and this energetic of the big black holes, in the opinion uh, which we are going to hear, are the one which uh, uh, are the, in, the inset uh, of star formation. In other words, star formation, star formation originates from action of very big black holes. This is the You have to forget about all, all the old ideas. The new horizons, uh, 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 forget it for a moment. We are facing a new reality. Not too far. We are not interested in too far back. Because we are, find, because we are finding that between z equal 25 and z equal 10, we are seeing a new animal. There are questions in people that is not here, that is listen. Uh, I would say, if I will come and, and say why I'm proposing this idea, okay? Uh, because uh, people is willing to formulate questions, people that are by internet. So, uh, maybe let me be yeah. practical. Yeah. I think we have focused on this first part. Okay. Let's do tomorrow another seminar. Tomorrow or, yes. or today? No, no, tomorrow. We have so much work, but uh, let's uh, think over. And, uh, and start over again at this point. Because I think everybody agrees, <laughs> it's a huge part of it. I mean, uh, there is something new happening. Let's go back to your picture. To, to which one? The first picture. There is something going on new, yeah. very new, the, the, the first slides. Yeah, there is uh, something very new around this arrow. And uh, it's, uh, and uh, where that arrow is, that big black holes. This is incredibly new. Yeah. I don't know on which. And, and galaxies also. Yes, yeah. in that region, there is a new component. Very large I, I understood uh, what you I idea, but I, my, I just have questions. Yeah. Means only things people expect happen in a smaller gene. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. small Z. Yes. In fact now the fact tell us only things happen at a larger gene. No, no. see what you're saying? No. No? No, no. No, uh, you, uh, if, if you let me uh, explain, I will say that uh, the new problems that formulate the James Webb Telescope, the new interpolation of, uh, by the new results of the James Webb, can be explained by astrophysics that we observe in the local universe and in the distant universe related to the feedback of black holes, okay? Mm -hmm. The feedback of very early black holes yes. can respond. Yes. And okay. the I second think. part will, I, that I would like to go is what observations support this hypothesis, okay? Let what observations? 
this will be observations where you see how jets trigger and enhance star formation. Okay? In the local universe and in the distance universe. So when you don't still don't know if you if you don't mind the want to add the voice. What we have been studying also with well-known observation where we have summarized, okay, by Felix, is that there were many things observed between uh, Z equal one and uh, historically, even uh, the formation of GRV at Z equal 18 and Z zeta 19, they were observed before. Now, what uh, Felix is trying to point down yeah. is uh, that there is something, even if you put all these things together, okay? There was a, a traditional picture, which is this one. Fermi, the pa 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 population tree, pa 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 pa, all this was. We even realized that the first galaxy could be at, uh, uh, but now we see data on first galaxy at Z equal 20. And this is new, okay? Yeah. It's confirmation of this. Yeah, but you, what is yes. not confirmed, what, not, what is surprising, is another thing that just before that, just before that, when the hour is, they are black holes of 10 to the 8 solar masses. These are new animals. Yes. But, new but, animals. But, but I'm going to show uh, as a continuation is that the hypothesis that I formulate uh, in my work to explain this unexpected, some of the unexpected results being observed yes. by James Webb uh, are based on a physics that we observe in the local universe and at All the distance. the physics in the of distance. the local universe which has been observed, that is a fact. But and and, and that phys the physics is universal, okay? Yes. And uh, so the physics that we observe in the local universe and a distant universe, going from our own galaxy where we observe jets that enhance for star formation when they impact in molecular gas, is something that we observe in our galaxy, in nearby galaxies, and in distant galaxies up to a redshift of 3.8. And if physics takes place in all this time, it should have happened earlier, namely at redshifts of uh, well, when the universe had uh, 200 million years. Okay. I mean, the physics is universal so far. Yes. And uh, what I, I'm selling, telling is that perhaps you are right. Perhaps uh, very early in the universe, uh, well, the geometry that was generated, etc., was more pronounced. But I say yes. we can explain many things that surprise with James Webb okay. that can ex be explained I, with the physics we observe I, in, in the observable universe. I like to formulate this a little differently. The novel thing, new, happening, which came as a surprise, 
is that there exists very large black hole of 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9 solar masses. Before, no, excuse me. In general, this is a new thing which happened. It happened with the Chinese colleague in uh, in uh, in uh, at the university in uh, Arizona. Uh, he was one of the first to discover the ten to the eight solar masses. Yeah, it's, and, it's, it, well, there are... and, and the discovery of the 10 to the 8 solar mass black hole was a surprise because we could not come out of the revolution and so forth. It was a new surprise. Now, the only new thing that is coming out is that this 10 to the 8 solar masses appear to appear first very early earlier than star formation okay this is a point now what uh, felix is trying to show us we are showing is if you take a large mass black hole inside our own galaxy like the one we has been studying okay the physics that he has been studying inside our own galaxy of hundreds solar mass black hole being active or active galactic nuclei of active galactic nuclei of 10 to 8 solar masses around us like in, uh, uh, in the one of Marcarian okay is sufficient is su it's new this one is sufficient to explain the star governing the star uh, uh, creation rate. Yeah. Okay. The early yeah. star creation yeah. rate. This is the reason I would dislike to call them population three. Yeah, but it's a completely different philosophy. Population three stars, the definition that I have of those is that stars that have a primordial chemical yes, co composition yes but uh, okay but uh, by definition this one that we are finding are uh, primordial both primordial and that you cannot have yeah but i would not associate the two population thing because there were part in a universe in a friedman universe smooth Instead, here they are applied not to a Friedman universe smooth, to a Friedman universe that has Z equal 20 as 10 to the 8 solar mass black hole, 10 to the 10 solar mass black hole. This is a different boundary condition. Yeah, well, uh, you, you, you see, you uh, see the these are the black holes that are in the way yes. of growing. Oh, yes. Okay, these three. And this is one of the expectations with James Webb, that we could go along this line and see how they got yes. to these very large masses of 10 to the 9 solar yes. masses. Yes. Okay? And uh, with the James Webb, I think the limit will be here uh, about the uh, redshift of 15. Of okay, 15. But it's a new philosophy, new but, approach. But approach. then to go earlier, and this is what I wanted to go in the second part, is starts to play a role, SKA. Yes. I mean, with the James Webb, we will not be able to detect black holes with masses of uh, uh, less than 10 to the five let's say roughly i mean this these are already very different difficult to to have yes. been detected yes. Yes. so we, uh, this is the reason why i dislike the the press release of james Webb. we are facing a new cosmology okay. you, you, you are following what i'm saying yes. 
Sí. And we are part of the game. Of course, uh, if I have to tell you the truth, we have been too conservative in our study. There, there are questions from uh, the audience yes. somewhere else. Uh, let's okay. uh, let's uh, them uh, yes. let's see. Uh, formulate the questions. Okay, they are there? Yes. This is fascinating. No important seminar. <laughs> and uh, I hope this uh, make you open your eyes from your in-depth and why we have to understand the truth. We are guilty because it's a relevant. We are going to the journey going as far as possible to understand the basic physics, new basic physics. Because we could not make a GRB with traditional physics. We could not make a GRB with the irreducible mass that we have to dedicate this afternoon, 3 o'clock, 3.30. Let's stop, because otherwise we cannot. Let's put 3.30. To go back to the reducible mass. Yes. So I think really we are making progress. And this has to come out this week. Well, here there, there is a question from the audience uh, by. Uh, 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 well, yes. Uh, I think. Uh, how can I know uh, the name? Ah. Hi, Massimo, how are you? I didn't recognize you so far, but, uh, well, how are you? Hola. Hola, Felix, good to see you, and uh, I'm enjoying your talk. We cannot hear you. You can't? Now? No. I don't know what to do, because uh, um, my microphone is on. I'm sorry. Yes. No te siento, Máximo. Um, Felix, can well, you hear me? Can. No. I can't read the question, uh, but uh, the question is, I have a question for Felix about energy feedback of supermassive black holes. As they grow, they can emit enormous amounts of energy in the form of X-rays and gamma rays. This energetic emission can stop further matter from falling into the black hole. Is it possible to expect to detect a mass threshold for these uh, supermassive black holes? Any hints? No. Well, uh, I didn't, I think uh, what you said is correct in the sense that uh, these uh, growing black holes, besides producing uh, relativistic jets and uh, associated massive outflows, will produce also X-rays and gamma rays, uh, which uh, the X-rays, I, as I was planning to to uh, explain at the end of the uh, second part of, uh, of my talk, uh, will uh, hit 
the uh, intergalactic uh, uh, gas and, uh, and quench in some way uh, many things that uh, are expected in the current uh, model that I will criticize. Uh, but I, I, you are right, but what has to be taken into account is that the infalling uh, matter of these streams, cold streams, is enormous. And what counts uh, is the column density of, of the gas that is going to accrete uh, uh, towards the, the black hole. I haven't, uh, I don't think I can make uh, at this stage uh, okay. any uh, statement or calculation to set, uh, as you suggested, okay. uh, a mass uh, limit, uh, a threshold for these uh, supermassive black holes because that will depend on the column density of these cold streams and, uh, and many other things. For instance, uh, as I was planning to explain, the, uh, the oscillations of uh, black holes in, uh, in accretion and, uh, and feedback also, which uh, counts. I mean, the black holes do not uh, we know they are uh, variable in uh, luminosity, namely in accretion and uh, feedback. But at this time, it's very difficult to, to make uh, uh, the calculation of a threshold. Okay. But it's a good question for the future, for the young people that uh, then, is listening. Thank, thank you very much. Can I intervene? I would like to intervene. I think uh, this, uh, the field, can I see the picture here shown with the anti-galactic nuclei and the cold matter coming in? Uh, I okay, this uh, introduce already the topics for tomorrow lecture, and then we have to stop today. Okay. I think there are some key points. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm going there. Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. There are some key points which are fairly dramatic. Okay. This one. <laughs> I think this is very dramatic. There are two components. One is the energy of the large black hole. Active. Let us assume that this red part is uh, a temperate solar mass black hole. I don't know what this mm -hmm. object is. Like. Yeah, it's a very powerful video galaxy, so yes, it's 10 to the 9 at least. Yes, okay. Then the fate of that black, massive black hole can be repeated. The, the fate of that massive black hole is fixed, is the rotational energy of the black hole, is fixed. You have only to wait and use that energy. The revolutionary part, really revolutionary, which is in the philosophy you are trying to introduce, is the revolutionary part, and I would like to make sure that this concept is clear, is that in this huge black hole active, okay, you are throwing in virgin material, cold, okay, and the interaction, this is the 
poker that you are proposing from what we know inside our own galaxy that this huge energy of the black hole interacting with this cold material called meat will create very sharp process for star formation very fast yeah which which is uh, to take in the oven, you understand, material and create stars, but not on the old way, Mars, which uh, 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 the, uh, Mars uh, yeah. following the whole cosmology of Friedman. No! Remo, you, you said that something very important. This process of jet induce star formation yes is very fast you fast. Uh, uh, and this is very and, and as soon as this blob yeah but in, let, let, let me finish it's very fast it's faster than will take for this gas to collapse by just gravitation yes. it's very because, fast because, because the jets move yes. at the speed of light and then they impact yes. the uh, large and column densities of gas that will increase the density much faster than by simple gravitational exactly. collapse. collapse. Uh, in some, I mean, in the local density very high, high. very fast. Yes, yes. I mean, the, the, the dish blocks will stay there forever uh, to uh, if they were low, uh, to make star formation very slow rate and they want to white dwarf and whatever in very long time. Because they, no, they, but this is a, you change cosmology, you make a different big bang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, the, the point is that several of these surprising results are due to this mechanism of jet enhanced star formation. Yes. Why the, the galaxies are so compact yes. and massive so early. Yes. If these black holes were already accreting these streams yes. of gas very early in the universe, and then you should they, they should generate yes. star formation much faster than the simple gravitational the collapse. Where come from this cold stream? Where come from this cold stream? I don't know how stars. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. It's Where? completely change of cosmology. Yes. I don't know if the uh, where come from this uh, cold gas stream. I, I the don't know. Area. We observe them <laughs> up to the a ratio of 3.8. But uh, is this a, is another problem. Is uh, another problem. But we see they exist yeah. when the universe was 1.7 giga years only. Yeah. They, are, they are there. Yes. Now, your question is a very proper question, but, but it's beyond uh, the limits that I have uh, at this time, yes. and of my hypothesis. In, in, my, in my opinion... But we observe them. In my opinion, they will be disclosed, okay? The one which you study traditionally, in a traditional, in a traditional uh, cosmology, Hmm. Okay. Smooth cosmology. Hmm. And there is no star formation quick enough. Okay. This is the key point. Yes. They, they will be just the traditional star formation rate. Right. That uh, run into top of with the observation. So the, the, the point is that there must be something additional either very early in the universe as okay. you are proposing or something that uh, yes i think we 
I think we we have to write down. Well, I, I don't think there is uh, any further question. You have a question? No? Okay. Well, we stop here. Uh, and uh, tomorrow we continue? Yes. Uh, at 11? Yes. Well, with pleasure. Because we have to continue. And then we have to take comments. But I think this is the fortunate way to take this. This will be a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, we can start to write new ethnos. I am even to write the conclusion along this line on, the, on, the, on my book. And I have to find a way how long she stay in the world to finish the today is uh, to Friday, then she will be here on Monday, see? To, I ask, I ask, do you have an answer? She has to